From the sketchbook of Geoffrey Cran, Rip Van Winkle, a posthumous writing of Diedrich Knickerbocker. It begins with a quote from Cartwright. By Woden, God of Saxons, from whence comes Wednesday, that is Woden's day, truth is a thing that ever I will keep, until thy like day in which I creep into my sepulchre. The following tale was found among papers of the late Dietrich Knickerbocker, an old gentleman of New York who was very curious in the Dutch history of the province and the manners of the descendants from its primitive settlers. His historical researches, however, did not lie so much among books as among men, for the former are lamentably scanty on his favorite topics, whereas he found the old burghers, and still more their wives, rich in that legendary lore so invaluable to true history. Whenever, therefore, he happened upon a genuine Dutch family snugly shut up in its low-roofed farmhouse under a spreading sycamore, he looked upon it as a little clasped volume of black letter, and studied it with the zeal of a bookworm. The results of these researches was a history of the province during the reign of the Dutch governors, which he published some years since. There had been various opinions as to the literary character of his work, and, to tell the truth, it is not a whit better than it should be. Its chief merit is its scribulous accuracy, which indeed was a little questioned on its first appearance, but had since been completely established, and it is now admitted into all historical collections as a book of unquestionable authority. The old gentleman died shortly after the publication of his work, and now that he is dead and gone, it cannot do much harm in his memory to say that his time might have been much better employed in weightier labors. He, however, was apt to ride his hobby his own way, and though it did now and then kick up the dust a little in the eyes of his neighbors and grieve the spirit of some friends for whom he felt the truest deference and affection, yet his errors and follies are remembered more in sorrow than in anger, and it begins to be suspected that he never intended to injure or offend. But however his memory may be appreciated by critics, it is still held dear among many folks whose good opinion is well worth having, particularly by certain biscuit bakers who have gone so far as to imprint his likeness on their New Year cakes, and have thus given him a chance for immortality almost equal to being stamped on a Waterloo medal or a Queen Anne farthing.